OK, so we have the beginnings of a user admin uh, interface that uh, we can dynamically render an array of users. Right? But uh, the, the array of users right now is just hard coded right, in, our, in our jQuery. Really, what we want this to be dynamic. We want to go back to the server. Uh, the server will perhaps retrieve users from a, from a database uh, and make them available to us for, for rendering. OK, so let's, let's switch uh, over to the uh, server side uh, so we can uh, generate some, uh, some data. Right? Uh, all right, so let's uh, start up a um, uh, workbench, and we'll create a table uh, for for ourselves with uh, with user data, right? I believe it was this connection, and um, okay, it's fetching the tables. Let's uh, create a user table. Uh, users, and it'll have a primary key, and I want it to be auto incremented. Uh, I want at least a username, username, uh, we want a uh, password, uh, we want a um, first name, and last name. Actually, you know what would be more interesting? Uh, would be more interesting, I'm not going to generate it actually. Remember we, uh, we created this hello table yesterday, yeah. right? Well, uh, we can actually, remember I, I told you that JPA allows you to map objects to tables, right? So let's do that. Instead of creating it from here, from uh, manually, uh, from, uh, from a, a SQL workbench, let's do that from Java. Let's create a table from Java. Uh, all right, so let's see. Uh, we have here in, uh, uh, in our main, um, uh, mo what's models? Here, here's models. Let's create a model that we can keep track of a user. All right. Uh, so let's see. Let's say uh, new, new class, and we'll call it uh, user. And uh, we'll um, we'll uh, we'll we'll declare a couple things here. It will say that uh, this is an entity. Right. So that it'll map it to a table, also called user. Right. Uh, we'll load that. We'll import that. Uh, we'll declare a couple of uh, fields here. So private uh, integer ID, uh, private uh, string username, a private uh, string password, and private string uh, first name, and private string last name. Let's keep it simple, just those. OK? Uh, and let's declare the ID to be a, a primary key by saying that this is an ID. Um, let's uh, import that, and also let's um, uh, do say that this is a generated uh, value uh, that has a strategy of identity. All right, so that's going to create a table called uh, user, which is with a primary key called ID with an auto increment. Right. Uh, all right, so we have that. Uh, we also have to uh, abide by the uh, Java Beans uh, naming conventions, uh, so and, and also uh, the, the specification. So we need to have setters and getters for each one of these. So we'll generate the um, those setters and getters uh, from uh, types and fields. What ID source generate setters and getters uh, for all these. Let's say okay. All right, generated all the setters and getters. I not I didn't want them here, really. Here, there we go. We have the setters and getters for each one of these, right? And this is what JPA is going to use, right, to do the mapping, right? So it's gonna it's gonna derive the names of the fields from these from these functions from these attributes, right? And to populate and to read and write uh, to these uh, objects, it'll use these setters and getters. All right, so we have that. Uh, we we also want to be able to um, uh, to communicate uh, using a, uh, um, a all we want to implement all the CROD operations for users. We're going to be able to create a user, update a user, delete a user, find a user by a primary key, find all all sorts of things. So instead of writing that from scratch, uh, we're going to create a repository for that. So we can create an interface here, and this will be uh, user repository. Uh, and this will be a, um, a a CRUD. So this will be an implements or extends extends uh, CRUD uh, repository. There it is. 
Uh, we want to tell it what objects are we storing in the database. We're going to uh, uh, store user. And the user has an integer as a primary key. And uh, user, we need to import that. And it's that one. Very good. All right, there we go. So we have, a, an inter we have, a, we have the beginnings of a repository. And for most part, that's all we're going to need. right? Uh, but later on, we want to do login and register, things like that, that we need to find them uh, by fields that are not necessarily primary keys, like username, uh, username and password by credentials. We need, we need, we'll need to create them ourselves. Okay, the, 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 the CRUD uh, won't, won't help us much. Well, actually, it will it help us quite a bit. Um, all right, so we get that. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, let's, uh, let's create a service that will allow. Yes? No, <laughs> I, I don't know how to. <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you find out, let me know. I think you can change the font for the whole IDE, but then it looks really, really weird. Like all, all the buttons become huge, and I don't know. <laughs> Uh, sorry. Uh, oops, uh, we have been uh, uh, um, adding all this stuff, and we haven't been uh, committing. Uh, boo boo, no. Terminal. Uh, where are we? So we're in uh, CD uh, web dev um, web dev summer one git status. Uh, so we created a couple things here. Uh, we have a controller, so let's add a couple of things here. Git add, uh, git commit, um, added uh, user add admin controller uh, model um, and repository, right? Repository. Uh, all right, so we committed all those kinds of things. Excellent. Let's continue. We got the CRUD. Let's now add the service. Let's add a new. Um, class, and this will be a user service. Um, again, notice that the, the we're following a very uh, um, a common design pattern, right? To break up uh, the, the, the various classes that have a very specific role right, to play in the architecture of the application, right? The, cr the, 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 crud w the uh, repository only deals with the database. It doesn't care how it's going to be displayed, how it looks, or anything like that. It doesn't have, that's not its responsibility. Right, the service is going to expose this data. That's all it does. It doesn't actually talk to a database. It delegates that to the repository. Right? So each one of these it ha has a very, very specific uh, task uh, to complete. Right? So this is going to be a, um, a REST controller, uh, meaning it's going to be mapped to some URL. And it's going to host a couple of functions that are going to be mapped to some URL pattern that are going to execute when you hit those patterns. Um, all right, so um, first we'd like to do what? We'd like to maybe uh, retrieve all users. OK, so let's, get, let's find all the users. So let's uh, do a, uh, a uh, public. I want to retrieve a list of users. So find me, find all users, something like that. And um, public. And we want to use the user repository we just created. And so that will be a user. Repository, uh, repo repository, okay, uh, and that's uh, let's uh, import that. Uh, and instead of us instantiating this repository, instead we're going to ask the framework to inject that into uh, into that variable, right? So meaning you instantiate it, make it a singleton, and whenever I uh, ask for it, just give me a reference to it. I don't want to handle, I don't want to deal with the life cycle of this object. So I'm going to auto wire, auto. Uh, wire, uh, the user is the model. Create. Wait, why doesn't find it? User. Hmm. Did I not call it user? <laughs> why don't you find it? Hmm, interesting. Uh, so this would be import, this would be models, and that would be user. Okay, found it. Uh, and the list is just a Java util. All right, and it needs to return. What is it going to return? Well, it'll use the repository uh, to find all. There's a function that does that. Right? There's such a common use case to retrieve everything. Select star from user. It's such common that it gives you that function. It already implements. It's such a boilerplate kind of use case. Why bother having to build it from scratch? Yes? Oh, yes, thank you. Ah. Return. 
and this, okay, it's complaining that repository actually does not uh, return a list. Uh, let's cast it. Okay. Uh, all right, let's try it. Okay, let's try it. Uh, let's uh, restart the server. Oh, uh, we, have, we haven't mapped it. Sorry, we have to map it. We're going to say that this particular... Um, this particular uh, function uh, I wanted to execute when I ask for all the users. And we'll say that this is mapped to a get request, right? A map. Uh, map to the following uh, RESTful API user. Okay. Uh, now the syntax for this for this uh, for this URL has a very specific syntax. Right. Yesterday we talked about uh, that it starts with slash API. That's a convention. Right. That's a convention that we can all agree. Uh, a very a very common one to use instead is REST. R E S T. That's also very common. And, uh, but I've seen more uh, API. And the other one is that uh, the rest here, no pun, uh, is, that, uh, is that here is a sum resource. You're looking from sum resource. In this case, is user, right? And, uh, and which, uh, you might ask, well, which user, right? Uh, so the, the case here is if I don't specify any particular user, then I must mean all users, which is perfect. That's exactly what we want. All the users, slash API, slash user returns all users. Perfect. That's what we want. Okay, so let's restart again. Okay, so that's uh, restarting locally, and we can um, we can go here. It's the same exact URL, right? Uh, but it starts with API slash user. And it comes back as an empty array. An empty array from where? Uh, from the table that has no rows. Right? But what table? We never created that table. Right? Makes sense because never, we never inserted it, but we never even created the table. Right? But if we uh, head over to, work, uh, uh, to Workbench, notice that there's no table in Workbench. But if we refresh, it'll go to the database in Heroku. <laughs> And at some point, the get schema has exceeded the what? Connection, connection numbers. Max user connections. What? Uh, let me let me kill that. Let me start it again. Really? Just wants to make me feel uh, look bad. Tables. Yeah, we have the user table. But that table was created by the mapping, the JPA mapping, right? It went out to do the, the query. It realized that it wasn't there, right? So it, uh, it mapped the, uh, the schema in Java, uh, the Java schema, and it created an equivalent SQL schema, right? And it, and it created a create uh, 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 command, uh, created the schema, and then it did a select star on it, right? And if you notice, the uh, the column names are almost the same as what we are looking for. But notice that instead of capital, right, uh, using the capital casing, it's using the underscores. Right, uh, it's a it's a it's using a smart naming convention that which is a the convention that you would usually use in SQL, right? Uh, since since uh, uh, uppercase it's uh, typically SQL is uh, case insensitive, right? So so to be able to distinguish between words. Uh, we use underscores, whereas in Java we use uppercases, right? In in HTML, typically we use dashes. Right? So depending on what layer where you are in the framework, right, you will use different naming conventions, and somehow you need to uh, make them work, right? That somehow they have to map one one to another. All right. Okay. So we are able to do that. Let's insert just a couple of users here. Uh, let's do. Um, uh, let's uh, uh, send to SQL. Let's uh, insert and. Um, uh, here, uh, we're not going to use the ID uh, since um, since it's auto 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 increment, and so this would be the uh, first name. We'll uh, use uh, uh, Love Lace, no Ada, 
Lovelace. Uh, who's that? Uh, let's see. A password is um, whatever. Uh, and the f the username is Ada. Oops. Uh, let's uh, let's run that. Okay, we're able to insert. If we go back to our, our our query here and we refresh, notice that we have Ada. Right? It gives us back as an array of users, which is just one one single element. Yes. Oh, uh, when we when we just re, re when we reran the application, right on that first query that went out, JPA realized that there wasn't a, a table and it created the it did the uh, uh, the create statement. Yeah, JPA does that magic, which is pretty cool. Um, all right, so let's uh, maybe uh, add another one. Um, uh, Bob Oak. Well, it has the same exact password. And now we have two. We have two elements, right? Two users. All right, so now that we have data in the database, right, the, the question is, well, how do we fetch it? Right, we're going to fetch it from the, from, the, from the client. We want to go retrieve it and then dynamically update the, 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 the uh, user interface. Yes? The pattern? Uh, I'm not sure. It's, it's, I think it's incrementing by 10, but it's by default to 2. You can configure that. Yes. Oh yeah, of course, and we'll do that. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, we'll do that. Uh, I just wanted to show you that we needed we needed a place to put things, right? And the easiest thing is to do a get. A post is just one uh, level of complexity, right? So we'll we'll first do the, the get, which is the easiest one. All right. Okay. So let's uh, let's take a look at this. Um, excellent. So we're, we're we're done. We have some data. We have a we have an API. Usually, this is referred to as a web service endpoint. Okay, uh, that is it's a very common uh, pattern for uh, integrating disparate systems, right, in a in a common language. Uh, so that uh, you know, on the, on the on one side you could be, be C sharp, on the other side you could be Java, on the other side you could be whatever. It doesn't matter as long as we all speak JSON. Right, as long as we can all agree on some format to exchange data. Uh, it was very common that we used to use XML, uh, but more commonly today, uh, JSON has kind of overtaken uh, just, just because of the sheer number of applications, web applications that are out there. Uh, that, uh, the, you know, it's a very common way to format data. Okay. All right, so let's, uh, let's grab this from the, 